Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about out of order streaming in React. But before we talk about out of order streaming, we're first gonna take a look at in order streaming. And to do that, I've got this Node.js application right here, and we're gonna use it to explore streams. So on our index route, we are gonna come here and we are just gonna paste in some code that creates a new stream. And I think the first thing about streams that you need to know is that if you are using the uh, response object, you can pass it a stream. So a uh, response knows how to read data right out of a stream. Okay, let's give our file a save and uh, refresh our page. And we are gonna see we get a blank white page here. This makes sense because we haven't put any data into our stream. So the first thing we need to talk about is this start function. Uh, this start function allows us to start writing data to a stream. It's passed a controller and we can use controller.enq to write data to our stream. So uh, we are just gonna pass it a p tag that says hello. And then now look at that, our page says hello. One good thing to know about this in Q function is that we can call it multiple times. So uh, we can come here and we can duplicate it and we can do it again with the world. And now when we reload our page, we see hello world. Now you might be wondering, why do we need a stream to print hello world to the browser? Uh, couldn't we just use a string here? What's the point of using a stream? And this is where the first kind of unique feature of streams comes in, is that you can write data to a stream over time. So uh, in between hello and world, we can do uh, a promise. So we can await a new promise that just takes a second to resolve. And uh, we can turn the start function into an async function. And then now, uh, when we load our page, we're gonna see hello, and then a second later, world comes in. So we, uh, we stream down our text. We're able to write hello, wait a second, and then put more data into the stream. And at that point, it shows up in the browser. So this is kind of the cool feature of streams. You get to stream data over time to the browser. Now, another thing to know about streams is that they are in order and append only. So we can't go back and we can't change data that we've already put into the stream. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this line. And let's say we wanted to change hello to say hi. Well, the best we could do is something like send a message that says, oops, I meant to say hi, not hello. And then now we're gonna get three pieces of data streamed down to the browser. And our final message is gonna be a little correction telling us that we wanted to say hi and this is an important thing to know about streams. Once we write data to a stream, we can't go back and change it. Once we enqueue a piece of data, the stream is gonna to try to get that data over to the browser as quickly as possible. And so if we need to edit it, well, we really can't. But here's the cool thing. We're not just writing uh, text or data. We are writing HTML for the browser to display. And since we're writing HTML for a browser, that means we can also write JavaScript and we can use JavaScript to edit data that we've already streamed. Let's go up to this P tag for hello and let's give it an ID of greeting. And then down here, instead of sending this oops message, uh, we are gonna send a script tag. And inside that script tag, we are going to edit the, uh, the greeting element. So we'll first fetch that element and then we will change its text content. Copilot wants to say goodbye, that's a little grim. So uh, we are just gonna change it to hi. And then finally, we are gonna close our script tag. And then now, when we load this page, we are gonna see hello world. And then look at that, uh, hello gets changed to hi. And this is the idea behind out of order streaming. From someone using a browser, it looks like we stream data out of order. It looks like we were able to go back and edit data that we had already written to the stream. Of course, we didn't. If we uh, look at the source code for this page, we are gonna see our stream come in order again. But from the user's point of view, it looks like an out of order stream. It looks like we edited data in the stream. And this idea of out of order streaming is now important in React applications. It's important because of how React server components fetch their data. Of course, we cannot talk about React server components without looking at a React server component application. So over here, we've got this application and it's just got this weather component. This weather component fetches the data, the weather data for a location. So right now it is sunny in Midtown. Now, if I go ahead and I reload this page, 
you're going to notice that the page takes about a second to load. We're going to see that loading spinner for a second. And that's because this weather component needs to go off and it needs to fetch data. So our page is blocked by this uh, data fetching get weather function, which means we can't render any of our page until the weather is fetched. But one of the really interesting things about putting data fetching in components is that you can now look at a page and you can tell what parts of the page are dependent on that data fetching. So in this example, we know in order to render the weather, well, we need to fetch the weather, but we don't need the weather to render these start and end tags. Uh, these are outside of the data fetching component. And so we can use streaming to stream down these start and end tags, and then later on stream down the weather as soon as it becomes available. And the way we do that in React is with suspense. So we are gonna go ahead and we are gonna create a new suspense element, and then we are gonna move our weather component inside of it. And right there, you see the live reload. You see that our page is gonna get start and end, and then as soon as the weather data is fetched, it pops in in between. This is out of order streaming in React and Suspense makes it so, so easy. Uh, one thing about Suspense is we can pass a fallback that says loading weather data. And then now when we reload, we're gonna see loading weather data and then the weather pops in. So just like our example before that was able to edit text on the page that was able to change hello to hi, we can use out of order streaming in React to show a loading message and then replace it with the data once that data is finally loaded. And I think this is just so cool because here we are just writing declarative code. We are just saying while the weather component is fetching its data, show the loading message. We are not having to give uh, p tags IDs and stream down JavaScript to swap them out. React is taking care of all of that for us. We just get to wrap our data fetching components in suspense. One really awesome thing about this is all this data is streamed over in a single HTTP request. So again, let's pop open the network tab and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at the document, uh, the HTML document. And you'll notice that up here, we kind of get the loading state of our application. We get start, loading the weather data and end. And then uh, somewhere down here in this HTTP request, we are gonna see a new P tag that says uh, the weather right here for, um, for New York City. And so it's really cool. React is able to stream everything in one HTTP request using suspense for the loading state and then filling in that suspense boundary with our actual data once it's ready. And we don't need any additional fetch requests to get this data on the screen. It all comes over in one HTTP request. And I think that's just so cool. Now I've got one more example to show you just how powerful React's out of order streaming is. We're gonna close our dev tools and we are gonna come over to this grid page. And here, let's go visit it, go to slash grid. And right now we are just rendering a, a grid of 64 different numbers uh, using this loop right here. But you'll notice down here, I've got this thing called randomly slow component. Uh, this component takes between one and four seconds to render. And when it renders, it just renders this check mark. So instead of rendering a number, we are gonna render randomly slow component. And then now when we reload our page, you're gonna notice this loading spinner for a few seconds. Again, reload takes about four seconds for our page to render. And that's because our page can't render until all of these 64 components have awaited their promise and they are all blocked from anywhere between one to four seconds, but we can use suspense to stream down each of these components as they become ready. So let's go ahead and let's wrap our randomly slow component in this suspense boundary. And then now we're gonna see that as each one of those components finishes its promise, it's gonna immediately stream down its check mark. So we don't have to wait for all of them to finish. Each component can just stream down its check mark as soon as it's ready. And I think this is just so cool. We are just streaming down different parts of this grid as the data becomes available. Now, in reality, you probably won't be using out of order streaming to stream down 64 different React components, but I do think there's a few situations where out of order streaming can be helpful. Maybe you've got some uh, user data in the corner in a header, and you don't want loading that user data to block the whole page. Well, you can just stream that in. Another UI would be something like a blog post with comments. 
Maybe you don't want loading the comments to block the blog post from rendering. So you render the blog post, but you wrap the comments in a suspense boundary so that you can stream in the comments as soon as they're ready, but the user is able to view the blog post right away. So I think there's um, a couple really cool applications of out of order streaming with these React server components. The last thing I'll say is I think it's so cool that suspense is part of this React server component model. You know, React could have said, hey, we're giving you server components and they just block on the server until they're ready to render. But then we're at a weird spot with our UI because now our UI is, is only as fast as our slowest component. But by baking suspense into the model, we get to sidestep all that and any component can render as soon as it's ready. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.